uh, got into this business uh, back in 92. Um, grew up on a farm in southwestern Manitoba and uh, decided I wanted to do something different than that and tried a few different jobs and out of all the jobs I ever did I hated this one the least. I got involved with Esquire. I purchased the uh, business almost seven years ago now uh, from a couple couple guys that were retiring from it. Um, it was nice to see that a guys could actually retire from this trade. Um, and uh, yeah, I started by myself. And over the years, I've uh, we've grown to three three people. So um, it's been good. There's not many actual barber shops left in this area. Uh, trying to keep it keep it alive for at least another generation. Um, we just do strictly walk-ins here, just like they, they used to do. Um, just come in and wait your turn. If you got to wait a bit, no big deal. People like to visit anyway, and uh, uh, try to keep the prices down so people can afford it. And uh, um, yeah, we just and just strictly do guys cuts here. I got into the barbershop business because I was tired of the hairstyling trade. It's not easy to be a stylist, um, especially at my age, I guess. It's more the younger girls are really, really popular. I don't have the high school bubbliness that I needed to be a stylist. I love working here. Kurt is really good to work with. The barbershop has a lot more relaxed atmosphere. It's Most of our clientele are really, really good. We, I rarely have a bad day at work. Usually, customer service wise, you try to start up a conversation. We try to remember what's going on in people's lives. We sometimes double as a psychologist. People will come in and um, tell us what's going on with their lives, what their problems are, all in the space of a 15 minute haircut. Yeah, some guys come in and uh, have personal issues and once you get to know, which is what I try to do, I try to get to know the, the clients as well as everyone else here. Uh, after people feel comfortable with you, they'll, they'll tell you a lot more personal stuff than they tell anybody else, you know. So the story of how uh, Curtis he said he saved my life one time. I was driving home with a student teacher from Minto, and uh, her car conked out like, just before the, the big okay. hill there right? on the way back. So it's like middle winter, and we're going, well, what are we going to do now? And we didn't know, but she blew her transmission, right? <laughs> so then we're standing there, like it's freezing cold, and here comes her, you know, at this car. We didn't know it was Curtis at the time. It was some, it was this truck with a big shovel in front of it. <laughs> so he's driving along and and at first it looked like he's just gonna drive by he waves like this. There we go, hey. And then he pulls over and stops. What's the matter? Go, well, you know, just get in, we'll give you a give you a ride to Brandon to work. Hey, great, you know, nice guy. And, uh, I, I said work they'd help pay for gas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was a condition, eh? So then we're driving along, and then you know we're having a good conversation. Next thing you know, there's steam everywhere coming out of the, coming from under the hood, and then he has to pull over. What happened? You blew a, you blew red, a, red hose. Yeah. So we're we're done. So then we're all like, what do we do now? And then this this big van comes along, and uh, well, we're almost in Brandon, and uh, they're highways people, and they pull over and they go, hey, do you need a ride? Yeah, sure. So we all get in. And then he's driving along, and he's going, uh "Oh, my 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 tank's getting empty." <laughs> oh no, you gotta be kidding! But we made it, so. A lot of our clientele have been coming here since their first haircut, and they'll be here for their last haircut. It's. It's a very close relationship. Yeah, it's very close. They know us. They trust us. We don't really advertise a whole lot. We don't have to. It's a lot of word of mouth. There's a steady, regular client base. We have new ones coming in all the time. 
some move away, some come back. There's some that come from Winnipeg once a month to get their hair cut. There's not a lot of people wanting to get into this trade. It's kind of too bad, but uh, in another sense, we don't have a lot of other competition. Though. So it's, it's good and bad. Um, yeah, the thought of me having a shop with 25 people working at it, it's, it's not going to happen these days with, a, with no barber school. But uh, uh, a lot of people get out of hairdressing school and, and some of them just want to focus on guys' cuts. So, so they come to a barber shop and, and watch and learn from, from the barbers that work there. The best part of working for Kurt is he really gives a damn. He really, really understands that we have lives, we have children, we have things that need to be done. Um, if it looks like I'm having a bad day, he'll actually ask if something's wrong. He'll, and it, again, he's just a really laid back person. It's really easy to work for and fun. <laughs> and what do you see for the future of the Esquire Barbershop uh, in, uh, in Brandon? Well, I just hope to be open for another 20, 30 years anyway. Um, and hopefully there's somebody else out there that would want to buy it at that point. We like to cut everybody's hair here. Uh, if, it's, if it's guys, uh, right, from, right from diapers to... I've got a client that comes in, he's 104. So it's, that's what makes the job interesting.